right, well, here we are for our teaching time, the second week we have this month to look at the Lord's Prayer, this gift that Jesus gave to his disciples and to us when they asked him to teach them how to pray. And it's this great gift for us to learn a little bit more about. We use it in worship all the time. It's one of those prayers that we can memorize uh, and use in our daily life as just a a way to center ourselves on God and on the life that we share uh, in Christ. Uh, And so today, we're going to be talking about the fourth and fifth petitions of the Lord's Prayer. You remember last week, we talked a little bit about what a petition is in this context. A petition is an asking of something of God, right? And in the Lord's Prayer, we've got a number of different petitions, different little verses of the Lord's Prayer. And so tonight, we're going to be looking at a couple ones that we haven't looked at yet. These come to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 11 and 12, which is our scripture text for this evening. Uh, And this is continuing Jesus uh, talking to the disciples about how to pray. He says, Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. Now, this might not be how you usually say the Lord's Prayer. There's a lot of different ways of making use of these words, little different translations or different language that we use. But these are the fourth and fifth petitions. And you can kind of see how they might be divided too, right? We've got, give us this day our daily bread, which is kind of its own little self-enclosed and capsuled piece. And then that next one, forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. So those are the fourth and fifth petitions. Now, we don't really talk about debt and debtors when we use the Lord's Prayer usually in church, right? We talk about forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And so that might be some language you're a little more familiar with. Uh, But before we jump into looking more deeply at these petitions here. Let's take a look at our vocab words, or our vocab phrases uh, for this week. Got a couple different definitions to throw at you. First, when we're talking about daily bread, well, what does it mean? It's not just bread, right? It's everything we need for life. And we'll get into that a little bit more when we look at this more deeply. And then when we talk about trespasses, when we pray or our debts, what we're really talking about in this prayer is our sins, those things that we have done that we shouldn't have done, uh, or those things that we failed to do that we should have done. Remember, because there's two different kinds of sin, aren't there? There's the sins of commission, when we do something that we shouldn't have done, but then there's also the sins of omission, where we fail to do something that we should have done. So those are the two definitions that we have for today. So memorize those, write those down, all that good stuff, prepare for the test. Let's look a little deeper at these two topics. First of all, our fourth petition uh, would give us this day our daily bread. I talked a little bit about this just a moment ago, but when we pray, give us our daily bread, we're not just asking God to give us some of this, right? Although that does look pretty tasty. When we're talking about God giving us our daily bread, what Jesus is teaching his disciples and us to pray is to pray that we be given what we need to survive, right? That, and Jesus talks about this at another point in Scripture too, we don't live just on bread or on food at all, for that matter. There's a lot of different things that we need to survive. We need water, we need shelter, we need people who care for us, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, And so when praying, give us this day our daily bread, we're asking that God would help provide those things that we need to continue in this life. But there's also something to this as well that isn't just about asking God to do things for us. Remember I mentioned this last week that these petitions in the Lord's Prayer are often two-sided. There's one thing that we're asking God to do for us, but they're also meant to remind us of who we are and what we're supposed to do too, right? Sometimes in church we talk about being the hands and feet of God. We pray that God uses us to accomplish the things that God needs to do. And that's just as true about daily bread. Now, when we are praying to be given daily bread, that's got to come from somewhere, right? There's got to be someone who provides those things that we need. When we're young, it's our parents, but it's in our communities as well. And so when we ask God to provide for us our daily bread, 
we're also asking that God use us to provide that daily bread, that sustenance that people need for those around us. Any time that someone's in need, their daily bread means getting help from those of us who are around. And so there's a lot of different ways that people help each other, that people are community together. And any time those things are happening, that is daily bread being met by the hands and feet of God embodied by those of us who are around. And so when we pray, God, give us this day our daily bread, we ask for sustenance, but we also ask God to work on our hearts that we can be used to meet those same needs in our neighbors. So that's what that petition is kind of looking at. And then we've got one other petition that we're looking at today, that idea of forgiving us our debts as we forgive those who are debtors to us, or forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think of trespassing, the first thing that jumps to my mind is a sign like this, right? No trespassing. It means you're not supposed to be in a certain spot, or you went somewhere that you weren't supposed to go. And it can kind of be a little confusing about how we find that language in the Lord's Prayer. When we pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Well, man, Jesus, I don't think I've gone on anybody's property that I wasn't supposed to go on, right? So how does this verse apply to me? Well, as we talked about in our definitions, when we're talking about trespasses in the context of the prayer of the church, what we're really getting at is our sins those things that we've done wrong, that we've messed up with. And so it's not just about not going where we're not supposed to, but it's about being the people who God calls us to be. A big part, a huge part of who we are as Christians has to do with this idea of forgiveness, of grace, right? Each time we gather in community, when we gather in worship, we have the confession of sin and the absolution where we are forgiven for those things that we've done wrong or failed to do the things that we should. Uh, And so when we pray that God forgives us our sins, that's kind of putting that in the front and center place in the prayer, that we know whenever we bring our concerns to God, even if we don't know what they might be, God will forgive forgive us for it. But there's another part to that too, that it's not just forgive us our trespasses or forgive us our debts or forgive us our sins, right? Right? The petition has another part to it, and you can't have one without the other. The other part is, as we forgive those who sin against us, who trespass against us, who are our own debtors, this is part and parcel with what it means to be forgiven. The idea that we forgive others as well. In fact, Jesus talks about this an awful lot in his ministry. He even tells parables about this. People who want to be forgiven themselves but don't want to forgive others. And I think we can all identify with that in some way, shape, or form, right? It's super easy to accept forgiveness, at least easier than the alternative. It's when we're asked to forgive others that have done wrong to us that that gets kind of tough. But it's super important. It's a part of what it means to be in the body of Christ. That's why in a lot of churches you'll see we have this thing called the sharing of the peace before communion, right? A couple weeks ago, we talked about what communion is. It's this sacrament, this place where God does something special and gives the forgiveness of sins. And before we get to that point of the service, we share peace with one another. We make peace with our neighbors. We forgive them their sins as we are forgiven by God. Two sides of the same coin. We do them one and the other. But it's not just about forgiving our neighbors for their sake, right? Jesus teaches us to forgive the sins of those around us, not just because we want to reconcile it with them, but because it's important for us as well. See, there's an old saying that the first person who is blessed when forgiveness happens is the one who does the forgiving. Because when we hold on to all of our, our, our grudges and all of the wrongs that have been done to us, 
that has a way of really binding us up and weighing us down where we can only focus on remembering the things that people have done to us, remembering the slights and the insults and all the things that people have harmed us with. But it's when we're able to forgive, to let those go, that our bonds are broken, that we are unchained from our own shackles. And so Jesus teaches his disciples and us to ask God to help us forgive others, not just to build relationship with them, but for our own well-being. It is important for us to learn how to forgive so that we can be ourselves set free to live the lives that God calls us to live. So there's a whole bunch of really important stuff that's kind of packed into these very brief sentences, right? The idea that God wants us to be given our daily bread, to give us what we need to be sustained in life, but also to help sustain others. And then also this idea of being forgiven as we forgive those around us. Remembering that it's not just one or the other, it has to be both for it to really be effective, for us to live the full lives that we're called to live. And so this prayer continues to be a blessing, right? Not only to be in conversation with God, petitioning God, asking God for these things, but also as a way for Christ to remind us of what it means to follow him, of what it means to live lives as followers of Christ. So, I invite you to continue this conversation about the Lord's Prayer and about these petitions in particular as we go into our small groups. Hope you have some good conversation tonight.